Hey Model Maniacs, Derek here getting ready to do that all-important kit review so that you, the Model Junkies, can make an informed decision on what kits you really want to buy. Today, we're going to go back on our way back time machine to 1984. Ghostbusters just debuted on the big screen. Michael Jackson was successfully pitching Pepsi, the, call, the choice of a new generation, and Ford was celebrating 20 years of the Mustang. Yeah, in order of 20, in honor of 20 years, Ford came out with its first anniversary Mustang. That was 1984, and it was listed as the Anniversary Edition GT350. And that's what we're going to look at here. From MPC, we're going to take a look at the 20th Anniversary Mustang. Being a Mustang fan, I thought these were pretty sharp looking cars. I only got to see a couple of them up close. They only came in white with red interiors. They were a throwback to the original 64 Mustang. The, 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 one of the key things that back then was the white with red interior Mustang and that's what they're going for here. Now for some reason Ford put the GT350 logo on here which is the first time it had been used since the 60's and the Shelby's. Of course that kind of miffed off Carroll Shelby because this wasn't a Shelby. But anyway I digress. Uh, the car came in a three door, as in two doors and a hatchback, hard top. You can get it in convertible or the T tops. Um, also, you had the option of getting either the four cylinder turbo or the 5.0 V8 with a four barrel carburetor. Um, you know, it's been a really long time since I've seen a real one of these cars. Not sure what their value is anymore and how many are still around, but being a Mustang fan and a current owner of a Fox body similar to this one, uh, I still have a kind of uh, affinity for them. Um, these kits are kind of like the stock market, price wise. Okay, um, uh, you know I've I've been wanting one for a long time now because again I am a fan of the, the Mustang um, but you know I haven't seen one in quite some time they're bouncing around between 50 60 all the way up to 89 dollars I've seen um, of course I wasn't willing to pay for that so that's why I never had one for a long time until recently when I found this one and I was able to purchase it for under 20 bucks so let's take a look and see what this kit's like. First, we got the box here. It's got a nice representative representation of the car on the box top. Okay, clearly a 20th anniversary Mustang. It's got the Mustang logo here. 20 years. Um, it's a 10 to adult kit. It's in 125th scale. <clears throat> you go to the side. And what it gives you is another picture of the car with some highlights here about the molded white uh, plastic. It's got some uh, chrome plated parts and it's got some optional accessories. Um, some of those accessories it shows you here. Zoom in and take a look. Okay. You got your factory wheels or custom wheels you can use. But these were the factory ones right here. It's got a fully detailed interior. Okay, a little bit of a picture of the underside chassis and then the engine compartment. Okay, again, you can build this kit as either the eight cylinder or the four cylinder, which is really kind of a neat idea because nowadays most kits come with one engine, usually a V8. It's kind of harder to find the old six cylinders and four cylinders in some of these cars, but it's a nice option to have. So that's pretty cool. Um, the side of the box has got the same picture on the side, or on the end I said, here's a profile picture of the car, it's very nicely, uh, it's a very smart looking car I think, you know, for the early Fox bodies, you know, it was, this was when, to, in my opinion, the 83's and the 84's are when the Mustang really started to evolve into a, a muscle car again, you know, from the 73's, these were 
when they really started becoming a car again. Very sharp. It's got all white with the red markers in the bumpers. The bumper guards here. And then you've got the GT stripe on the bottom. Granted, again, the GT350 really doesn't belong here, in my opinion. But Ford felt it did. So, all right. Let's take a look inside the box and see what this sucker's like. Okay, so we opened the box here, and we've actually got a nice bit of plastic in here. Um, this kit was sealed, bagged and everything when I got it. Um, again, I took this stuff out of the bag, so it didn't have all the crinkleness on the camera. So, it does come bagged. Um, the only parts that aren't bagged is the chrome parts, and the windshield were not bagged. Everything else was, was bagged. So, let's start off save the body for last we'll start off we'll take a look at the body pan um, it's molded in white plastic it's a little soft on the details as you can see here and it's that I always refer back to these the NPC plastic kits They're very brittle to me hard soft molds but um, it is what it is. It's the only thing on the block, right? So anyway, you can see the unibody frame here on the front. The pans, you've got some soft details there, a little bit of wire, uh, brake lines or whatever there. Um, the It doesn't have a fuel tank here, probably a separate part. You flip it over and you've got the interior piece. Um, it's got a little bit of texture to it to represent the carpeting. A little bit of ejection marks here by my thumb. Can't really see it in the light, but there is an ejection mark there. Injector mark. You've got your mat and you've got your pedals. Okay. <clears throat> Next tree, we've got some of the parts are loose in there too, but basically you've got. Your firewall, you've got your radiator bracket, you've got your radiator shroud, water, you've got a water canister, battery, and you've got the master cylinder here. Okay. You got some coil springs, you got some parts here by my finger, I'm not sure what they are, but you got the springs, you've got the rear. Okay. It is only half, because down here is the other half, the bottom. Okay. These parts here, I'm not sure what they are. You've got the um, shocks. Don't know, I think that's part of the uh, front suspension. It's going to end up holding the wheel, I believe. The front wheels, but I could be wrong. You've got your back seat. To be honest with you, I don't remember the interiors too much. I don't remember if it looks like it or not. The Mustang I had was an 84, which was almost identical. Okay, actually it had the same seats because my seats were like this with a bucket with the halo and the netting in it. I always thought that was really cool. So there's your front bucket and it's the back. I love those seats. They hugged you. It was really cool. Okay. Focus. There's your tire well and your fuel tank. Um, that looks like a CB radio. I could be wrong, but a CB radio? I don't know. I have to look in the instructions to see what it says. Okay. You got your body mirrors. Get your parts for the wheels. We've got the center console here. Okay. I remember that all very well. And then we have the a lower valance panel here. I'm not sure if it's front or that's the rear. Lower valance. We've got some miscellaneous engine parts here. Here we go. 
looks like a cross member here we've got the fans the pulley for the four cylinder okay these all look like the four cylinder parts your oil oil pan bits and bobs drive shaft okay this is some of your V8 parts Okay, well your exhaust manifold, you get your fan, your water pump, your um, intake, oil pan, and the heads. Okay. We've got our four cylinder exhaust, some other pipes and hoses. A little bit sway bar, okay. Let's see, the rest of the parts are broken free, so it's going to be a little difficult to show you everything. But you've got the you already saw the back of the seats, and this is what the bottoms of the seat look like, okay. In the old car, this piece right here popped out you were actually able to pull that out and it would give you more support under your under your legs when you're driving actually made it very comfortable for long drives <clears throat> you've got the um, interior wall this is the back here I'm gonna slowly go to the front there's where your back seat sits those that's the, the armrest there going into the door panel Okay, that's what the door panel looks like, and then into the engine compartment. So you've got two of those, obviously, left and right. We've got our block for the V8. Oops, to get back. Here's half a block. This is a V8. In this case, half a V4. All right, and then here's the four cylinder, half the four cylinder block. Um, your front valance, okay, a little bit of flash, but I mean, it cleans up real easy. But I'm not surprised to see any flash on a kit like this. We've got the interior, the uh, instrument cluster. Okay, it's not badly detailed there. Radio under my finger. Okay, not too shabby. Let's see. This is an optional valance. This is your standard valance here for the front. Okay, standard. And then going back to the one I showed you a minute ago, this is your performance option one. Okay. Later on, Mustangs end up having fog lights in here. Actually, the 5. Hundred uh, GT350, I think, actually came with fog lamps. I'm not sure. I have to go back and look. And this doesn't show the areas for the fog lamps in it. This is more of like a, um, sorry, this is more of a focus. All right, let me go back a second. I'm sorry. This was your standard one, and the the anniversary car came with fog lights, so there really should be cutouts here and here and then Markel fog lights would go in here this valance was more of a performance valance like a what ended up turning into kind of a saline with the uh, more of a straight plow type front end okay and if you look at the box here right there you can actually see the fog lights that's where the fog lights go down there so that's weird Unless there's another balance in here for fog lights. 
We've got the optional hood scoop. This was kind of standard on the GTs. It was actually a reverse hood scoop. So if you see the car back here, this piece went on it this way. Okay, so the front was closed and the back was closed too, but it was more like this was supposed to be the intake version. Um, and okay, but that's the way that went there on top of the, the engine. We've got our glass, it came smoked, a little bit of scratches in it. Again, this wasn't bagged, this was free floating. Okay, that can be cleaned up nicely though. Um, the other parts, I already showed you the matching parts. I don't need to show you the second seat or anything like that. So, here's your uh, lower control arms for the front suspension not a large amount of detail here by any means it's an MPC kit but again it's the only game in town for this car um, we've got our chrome tree okay we've got some extra bits and bobs here which is pretty nice okay first off you've got fog lights here okay you've got your regular lights here for the front mirror the actual mirrors themselves that go inside the the mirrors the housings by my thumb you got your four your four barrel carburetor other bits and bobs air cleaner you've got some custom wheels here you've got the stock Ford wheels here okay the chrome plating on these is is over the top in my opinion so um, They'll be dechromed if you ask me. Take it all off and start over again. You get your valve covers for the eight cylinder here. You get your valve cover for the four cylinder. Looks like some extra gauges here. A chrome heater hose. What car doesn't need a chrome heater hose? Oh, here's something nice. A nice option. For those customizing cars, you got side pipes. Also, another piece I want to show you real quick. This is the four-cylinder air cleaner. Okay. Um, let's see. Hood. Okay, you've got the pilot holes here on the bottom, which is for that hood scoop I showed you earlier. Where do I put it? There. there it is. So again, this would go on like this. Okay. My GT came with one of these, but as you can see, the anniversary car does not. It's a smooth hood. We've got one red parts, clear parts tree for the taillights. Okay. And then we got the tires. The tires are your independent rubber tires. Okay. They've got BF Goodrich labels on the sides. See them in the glare. Again, you have to cut out the centers. Okay, but the tires have a nice tread on them. No big seams or anything like that. So they actually, they're pretty nice. BF Goodrich on this side too. Okay. And then, we got the body. So here's your typical Fox body Mustang. Alright. Um... Some seam lines here on the side. Um, otherwise, it looks pretty clean. Some divots here in the nose. It's funny, they had the, the 60, the early 60 cars, 65, 66, those things. I'll have a divot right there in front of the uh, headlight buckets, just like this. 
It's got no emblems on the sides, no 5.0, no horse emblem on the side. It's very smooth. Okay, need some cleanup on the bottom. Okay, but there's your front with the grill. Now the neat thing is also I had mentioned earlier you had the hardtop version, you have a convertible version, and the T-tops. With this kit, obviously you can't make a convertible out of it, but you could make the T-top version because you can see it's got the grooves where you can cut out the roof okay and you can make it T-tops it comes with the T-top option here okay so once you cut that roof line out you can put this in its place now it doesn't come with the T-tops themselves but you decide that it'll be open air and you'll be able to get a good look at the interior one of the things I never really did find, I never came across any T-tops of this car myself. But I'm sure they're out there. And oh, what else we got? We have the decals. The decals look like they're in fairly decent shape. Come in. You can see there you got your GT350 stripes. The red stripes here that fill these lines here those are going to go in between the body molding here that's what they go for you've got some license plates you've got the Ford ovals you've got the engine the uh, fender decals here not sure what those are not sure okay they don't look like they're too bad. They might be able to stand a little bit of time in the sunlight, but otherwise they do look pretty good. And then lastly, we have the instructions. The instructions are not anything to write home about. Small little sheet of paper. Starts out with the four-cylinder engine and the wheels. Okay walks you through the steps of all the parts, it gives you color call outs along the way working your way around a very simple build all right. decal placement there so it's not a very uh, well let me back up a second um, this is kind of a neat car. Again, it's a it's a car that you don't see very often anymore, okay? The real ones are vanishing. You don't see them. Um, these kits are very far and few between. There's not a lot of them out there as I used to see. Um, again, the prices are hit and miss. You can get them. Some, I've seen them just recently at the lower end, but normally I've seen them at the higher end around $60 and $80. So again, personally to me, from what I just looked at, I'm glad I didn't pick this car up for 80 bucks because it's I'd be a little disappointed. But for 20 bucks, it's a deal, or under 20 bucks in my case. But um, so that is our review for the day: the MPC 20th Anniversary Mustang Edition. So uh, that's it, guys. I hope this helped out. I hope anybody that's interested now has a better idea if they want to get the kit or not. Um, so that's it. Till next time, be strong. Mustang! Mustang GT. Hard right. Bigger front stabilizer bars flatten the curve. Quick left. Rear quadrashock suspension holds the line. New control in a car called Mustang GT. Want more? Take the uninhibited Mustang convertible. For the sophisticated technology of Mustang SVO. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Mustang! Have you driven the best built American cars? Yeah.